Hey everyone, um, as you can see this vlog is a little all over the place. That's because I'm traveling, so right now I'm just packing my bag, all the gear that I'm gonna be carrying, and then this video is gonna be in three parts. First, I want to introduce the idea for the project that I want to be making over the summer and that's why the video is called the summer of code. So the first part is going to be the what, then the second part is going to be the why and the third part is going to be the how. Geographically speaking, we're starting off in Norway, then we're going through Sweden, all the way to Serbia and at the end of this vlog we're actually going to end up in Greece. But first, a quick mention of today's sponsor, Obspot. They created a brand new AI-powered webcam and I was very excited when it arrived in the mail because this is something I really miss on my desk setup. It comes with a two-axis gimbal which allows you to position it in many different ways, reframe the image either by using the provided remote or by utilizing the AI tracking features. You can activate the tracking feature using a hand gesture or you can just simply say track me. And I even tried shaking the camera to see if it's gonna stay locked into place and it's pretty impressive. It delivers great image quality thanks to the very large 4K sensor that also supports dual native ISO and very fast auto focus. You can easily zoom in and out using gestures or even voice. So if you're looking to dramatically improve your production quality with crisp 4K video or you're like me and you'd like to give professional presentations while working remotely, check out the link in the description. Alright, first things first, I needed to stop by the office and drop off the plants in the hope that somebody will water them while I'm on vacation. So the idea with this video is that as I'm traveling, I'm gonna be telling you about my thought process and the details of the project but at the same time this is gonna be kind of like a travel vlog so I'm gonna give you some interesting details about the places that I'm visiting. So as I'm making my way through the Oslo Central Station let me give you kind of like the business case of what I'm trying to do and why. So far on this channel I actually introduced three different projects. The first one being one menu which is the window manager that I've been working on for over a year now and this one is free. And then recently I introduced an idea for the email application that I personally was very excited about because email is something everybody uses but not one single person that I talked to was actually excited about using email so I thought to myself there must be a way to innovate in this area and create something better but from the business perspective I realized that both of these applications are gonna be quite hard to monetize first of all one menu is a type of application that is going to be a one-time purchase and this type of application is also not something that is very expensive so no matter how many people actually install it's not gonna be a sustainable income for me and the email project is probably even worse than that because I think that perceived value of an email client is actually zero because most of them are free so for me to provide something that people would pay for and maybe even pay as a subscription it would take so much effort to make something that is vastly superior than everything else that's already out there so if they're thinking about it for like seven hours on the train to Stockholm I realized that there is like four criteria that the project needs to fulfill in order to be worthwhile working on. So number one, I need to be able to make it on my own. Number two, it has to be something that people are willing to pay on a subscription basis. Number three, it has to be something that I personally have experience with and that potentially I can use myself as well. And number four, it has to be something that most people actually don't want to make themselves. And so as I rolled into my hotel room in Stockholm, I kept thinking about all the different products that I could potentially make that fall into to these criteria. Tomorrow morning I was none the wiser but I was still very determined to figure out that project idea. But first I needed to hurry up and catch the train to actually go to the airport because we were taking the plane out of Stockholm. And so as I was riding on the train I was actually updating the website for one menu, adding the diagram for the keyboard shortcuts and so this is where I started thinking about this idea of having better analytics for the website as well as for one menu itself because I wasn't really sure how people are using one menu at all and I I only had very basic analytics on Squarespace and the more I thought about it the better I liked this idea of building some kind of an analytics app something that will ingest all kinds of different events maybe website visits maybe application interaction events and then produce some kind of like nice dashboard or maybe even apply some machine learning later 
And as we landed here in Serbia, I took a bit of time to relax, I played some guitar after a very long while, I said hi to my cat, and I even played my absolute favorite game of all time, Trackmania. But most importantly, I was thinking about the analytics project from the business perspective, and I really liked it because it was very clear that this type of application has to be based on subscriptions, because fundamentally you're hosting somebody else's data, you're taking care of the backups and all the infrastructure, and this is not something that most people want to build themselves. Alright, after remembering how to drive in Trackmania, now is the time to actually drive to Greece. And this is the point of the video when we start talking about how I actually plan on implementing this app. So I'll show you a little bit of the early architecture, as well as some code that I've written at the end. Welcome to Greece. We made a quick stop to get some refreshments, but then it was already getting dark, so all we had the time for was a quick stroll, we took some pictures of the sunset, and that was it for day one. Day two, however, was heavy rain, so I found myself a place at one of the nearby coffee places, and I started sort of thinking about the architecture, so let me show you what I have in mind. At first I was looking at Next.js and Vercel, but then I realized that's an implementation detail. What I need to be thinking about is the architecture, and so here I actually divided the app into two parts. You have the customer portal and the analytics service. And the last component is going to be the events ingress. In my mind, these three actually have vastly different requirements and different ways of scaling, so I chose different technologies for each one. Before I explain my reasoning behind these choices, it's worth mentioning that another reason why I sat down at this particular coffee shop was to actually download a couple of episodes of the Witcher series. Because it was raining, there was nothing else to do, and our hotel didn't have great Wi-Fi, we decided to take it easy and just binge watch a few episodes. But okay, the customer portal is where you'll have all your dashboards, all your charts, and this service is not actually going to contain any analytics data. So because of that, I chose Firebase as a placeholder for now, because for this small amount of configuration data, I don't want to over-engineer anything and I just want to make it work as quick as I can. Tomorrow morning we finally started seeing some nicer weather, but let's switch gears and talk about the analytics service. This service stores and allows us to query all the event data so that we can produce the charts, the dashboards and everything else. My idea is to take something simple like a Postgres database and then append every single event as it's coming into one large table and that way I can index every single column so that when I need to produce the reports, when I need to query for things, it's going to be very quick. And then finally we have the events ingress. And basically this component's job is to protect the rest of the system from a surge of events and also to validate every single event that's coming in. Ideally the ingress should be sending data towards the analytics service over some Kafka queue or something like that to the couple the different scaling requirements of both systems because the events ingress is going to be very high writes but basically no reads while the analytics service is going to be very high reads but gradual writes so basically that's the architecture that i'm going to try and make for this mvp and the rest of the day i just spent copying code from my older projects into this one so that i can have some boilerplate done very quickly let me know what you think about this idea and if you have any suggestions about the architecture or anything like that it's still very early phases so i'm really looking Looking forward to hear your feedback and if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit the like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one where I hope to actually do a quick demo of what I have so far.